Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. I'm Ada Oju. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I sewed my wedding dress. I previously put up a video on how I cut my wedding dress and this is the part two of the video. That's how to sew the wedding dress because you can't cut a wedding dress and not sew the wedding dress. So if you're excited to know how I made my wedding dress, keep watching. Before we go into the video, if you're not yet subscribed to this family, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that whenever I post a video, you will get notified. This dress took me around one week to make off and on because I wasn't working full time, like I wasn't working morning till night because I had wedding runs and other things to do. So give and take, I made the dress in a week because I wasn't like working round the clock so i don't know how long it will take you when you want to make your own wedding dress but this is how i made my wedding dress the detailed process i hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you subscribe okay let's go let's go let us go so i'm starting with my front part and these are the sides that's the center i'm just going to join the sides to the center this is the back part and just like I did for the front, I will join them together. That's the zip allowance, around one inch zip allowance. So I've taken it over to my sewing machine. I've done the padding. I've joined the center to the sides. I did same for the lining. Okay, you can see that the lining doesn't have that curve that it's in the main piece. So I want to impute the curve now. The reason why I didn't do it before is because sometimes you might do it and it won't align well. So I just left it straight up. Now I've secured a pin. You can see from the armhole to the around the shoulder lines, the neckline. So I'm just going to take it over to my sewing machine. And I'm going to, you know the way you do when you want to um, join your facing to the neckline of your bodice. That is what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to join the lining to the main piece. more like I'm turning over the neckline and after that I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to cut the outline of the neck is that simple it's safer to do it this way in my opinion because you won't have to face with whether the dots not aligning or the shoulder points not aligning because you know you've just tackled it from here so this is what we have here after that I made small slits so that the neckline will be well relaxed it won't be puffy because we are still going to top stitch the neckline i don't know how to call this one neckline or shoulder line you guys understand the drill so i turned it over and i'm going to top stitch the facing so that it will be well relaxed it won't be puffy so i took it back to my sewing machine and i top stitched the facing let me just tell you guys after making this my wedding dress and my wedding outfits i started pitting for my sewing machine because it went through a lot it went through a hard time <laughs> okay so this is what we have here i'm done top stitching the neckline that's the lining of the neckline this, you can see how well relaxed and smooth it is i gave it a press i gave it a really good press with the steam iron those are the um top stitches although it's not very clear because it's white it's all white you guys can really see after that i went ahead after that i went ahead to top stitch the lining to the main piece just to make sure everything is in place i secured the points that's the dart points with um, pins so that everything will be accurate and i also joined the sides and the armhole now guys i worked with a pattern for this wedding um, dress for the body so i had little or no adjustment i had little or no you know for the armhole for the sides i had little or no adjustment there okay now when you're cutting the lining as usual you have like you add like one and a half inch extra allowance so that by the time you smoothen it out whatever is left is the excess so is this excess that i'm cutting out now so that i can have like my main working piece so I'm just going to cut out the excess fabric along the armhole for both sides and this is what we have here. We already have like a working piece. I'll do same for the second side and we are done with the front part of the wedding gown. Okay. At this point I was really happy because I didn't spend so much time building the cup for this wedding gown. The pattern did justice for me. Like when you want to sew a wedding gown, draft a pattern. 
that is just a simple uh, advice i have for you you can see how beautiful it looks already so this is the back part i've gone ahead to sew the lining i have like 1.5 inch zip allowance that's the notch over there now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use the lining to turn over the yeah that side of the of the bodies okay i'm just going to lay them on each other as you can see i'm going to join it turn it over and top stitch just like we did for the for the neckline of the front part so when i got to that um that part where i joined my my that point i made sure i did like a back stitch so that it to be well secured after that i did my top stitch you can see how it looks so i'm just going to turn it over like like so as you can see and i'm going to join it along that side bearing in mind that i, I know the point where my zip allowance started okay because you, i'm working with a pattern here so i can't just join and join and join <laughs> so after that i flipped it to the side and i did a top stitch so that the zip allowance um, the zip allowance part will be well relaxed okay see when i'm done joining and joining you guys will see okay this is what we have here guys you can see i've turned over the zip zip uh, the zip seam i've turned over the top of the back part this is what we have guys i did the same for both sides next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to top stitch the armhole i'm going to top stitch the bottom i'm going to seal the sides as well so I've taken it over to my sewing machine and I've done all the sealing for the sides, for the armhole. Now I'm just going to cut out the excess fabric. The excess fabric that I don't need, I'm just going to cut it out. So I did this for both sides and oh, this is the back. We already have like the back part already prepped so next thing i just did here was i aligned both sides on each other and i joined my zip allowance so you, like i said i took um, cognizance of the measurement i used to join the seam of the of the zip allowance and whatever was left was what i used to um, join what you guys can see i don't know i can explain this thing again but you guys can see what i'm doing so after that i just aligned the the back part and the front part together i made sure the center of the front was aligned to like the middle of the sides and no that's not what i did i first of all checked if they both aligned well then i took the back part out and i marked out my bust my under bust and my waist measurement as you guys can see i just marked them on both sides next thing i did now i brought back the center part and i secured the center of i just secured them together i made sure the center of the front part was in the center of the back part and i'm with the aid of my markings at the back i joined my bodies okay very simple you will have seen me do this more than 100 times on this channel Okay, so that's what I did here, guys. I did this for both sides of the bodies. So after that, I'm done with the front part, guys. It was very simple to build the top part of this wedding dress. I'm just I, what I next thing I did was I cut out cut out the excess. Now, so after cutting the excess fabric from the sides of the blouse, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move move over to the flared. And I'm going to join the zip allowance. The, the, I'm going to join the back. This is the back part. I'm going to join it at the zip allowance. Okay. This is the back part. And I joined it at the zip allowance. And this is what we have here. This is what the back part of the flare looks like. And I flipped it over to the front side. And this is the front part of the flare. What I did here was I aligned the front part of the flare to the back part of the flare with the aid of the notches I made. I made sure the sides were well, ali were well aligned. Let me not bite my tongue. I also made sure the waistline was well aligned. Then I went ahead to mark my waist and I just joined the sides of the flat. Very simple, very easy. Guys, 
a lot of drama happened on this wedding dress i can't wait to even give you guys the gist just know that i cried another tailor nearly sp spoiled this gown for me well let's forget that one i'll tell you guys the story later now let's move over to the lining you guys know that we have two parts two types of lining or we use two lining for this gown so this is the first lining and i'm just going to join the sides of the lining together that means i will join i will not join the zip allowance of the lining instead i will join the sides of the front part and the back part together leaving the zip allowance open do you guys understand yeah so i've joined the front part and the back side of the lining together that is the zip allowance that is open you can see that this thing is roughly weaved or woven guys hmm. I cannot explain what happened to me. You guys, should, I will tell you guys the story. Anyways, the next thing I did was I joined. You guys know that 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 um what was it called that cape flared I caught that I told you I was going to put on top of the. I told you I was going to put on top of the flared. I joined it. I top stitched it. Then I went ahead to seal both sides like seal the both sides of the cape is it cape or short fled you guys will see what i'm talking about in a minute if you missed the cutting video like the video on how i cut this wedding gown you might be a little lost here but i cut like mini mini flares that i was going to attach to the waistline of the gown and that is what i'm joining right now and turning over and top stitching and locking the sides this is what we have here this is what i've been trying to explain to you guys <laughs> So the next thing I'm going to do here guys is this is my organza okay this is an organza it's just a straight organza and I cut like I think 1.5 and uh, one and a half yards on both sides and I'm just going to gather it okay I'm just going to gather it like do some gathering and I use my gathers foot presser and I just gather the organza together I did this for both pieces i folded the organza into two then i gathered it so this is what we have here okay so this is one part this is second part for both sides of the gown so the next thing i'm going to do here guys is i'm going to pin or i pinned the organza to the flared okay i secured the organza to the flared with some office pins I did this for both pieces that's you know the organza is in two pieces for both sides of the dress so I did this for both pieces so this is what we have here the organza has been secured to the flared and I'm just going to top stitch it around the waistline this waistline guys suffered you know the meaning of suffering afofo it's suffered <laughs> afofo means suffering in Igbo <laughs> okay so next night i'm going to top stitch it like i said so at that part i secured the organza with a pin to the flared i just top stitched okay i just top stitched guys i just top stitched and i did this for both sides of the flared okay After top stitching, you can see that the gown is beginning to take shape, it's beginning to take form. The next thing I did was this cape. I don't know, I like to call it cape, but it's a mini flared. Okay, next thing I did is I attached it to the flared and I secured it with office pins. So I've already attached one part, I'm going to attach the second part now. I later on adjusted the distance between you know the flare because here it looked so close close together but later on before I joined it on the sewing machine I adjusted them together and I just secured it with some office pins to the waistline So after securing it with some office pins to the waistline next thing i did was that lining okay i just aligned, aligned the lining you guys remember that 
the zip allowance is open i did join it together so i just secured the lining as well to the waistline okay see the heavy duty stitching that this my sewing machine did i really underrated my sewing machine but it did a lot so i'm just going to join it along the waistline okay you guys can see i've secured a lot of securing so i just top stitch top stitch top stitch i just joined everything i kept joining and joining and joining and joining till my thread finished and i changed the thread and i continue joining you guys know how we roll okay <laughs> so after that the next thing i did was the sides you guys remember that this the the zip allowance was open so i just joined the open zip allowance to the zip allowance of the flared okay you see what i mean in a bit i just top stitched it to the zip allowance of the flared you guys remember that i left it open okay You can see okay so this is the second lining remember that this dress has two lining and this lining will bear the bouncer this thing people call bouncer the basket is just going to bear the hard net of this is this will be the carrier of the hard net for the gown this is what will make the gown stand and guys i have another horrible story on what happened to this bouncer on the day of my wedding because see i cannot cry you guys should just i will give you guys a whole tea don't worry after this tutorial wait for the gist <laughs> okay so i just took a measurement i think i took about around five five inches interval later on i went to adjust it this is what it looks like i don't know why it's not showing maybe because it's white but this picture here is what the measurement looks like on the flared the next thing i did was i gathered the the i gathered the hard net i cut the hard net into like um three three inches in in width and I just top stitch the hard net to the gown. Okay, I top stitch the hard net to the gown. The width of the hard net is around three inches to three point five inches. So after gathering a lot of them, it took me a long time to gather a lot of them. I just top stitch the hard net to the to the to the lining. Okay, I top stitch the hard net to the lining, guys. And after this, I packed my load and I went home because the wedding was a couple of days and I was still in my apartment. Now I'm home. You guys can see the floor is different. <laughs> so this, after gathering the hard net and top stitching to the lining, this is what we have here. We had like a bloom of hard nets here. So the next thing I did is I attached the hard net to the flared. Okay attach the hard net to the flared now a lot of people have some people don't attach the hard net to the flared some people attach the hard net to the flared i wish i did not attach the hard net to the flared but we roll guys we keep going okay so i attach the hard net to the waistline of the flared i still left the zip allowance open just like we did for the first lining So this is what we have here you guys can see that the gown is already so bogus and it's standing i fell in love with this gown at this point like the, maybe i put the bouncer into the gown everything looked in order so this is what we have here i'm just going to take it out to my sewing machine and i top stitched the hard net layer of the gown to the to the flared I'm already calling it a gown. Whoa. I top stitched the hard net layer of the flared to the flared to the main piece of the flared. You guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know what to call it again. Hard net piece, first lining piece, second lining piece. You guys understand. Okay? You understand? If you don't understand, guys, please check out the video on how I cut my wedding gown. Link in the description box. You will fully understand this tutorial. Okay? So after top stitching the, the hard net to the to the to the flared the main piece of the flared just like we did for the other lining i just aligned the the seam of the hard net to the seam of the main flared and i secured it a pin and i'm just going to join that part together okay so that was just like a simple trick i used for covering up all my sewing everything and everything so everything will be neat and well put together okay
Then I take it back to my sewing machine. Like I said, you see how I joined it in a bit. This is what I did for the front part of the for the first lining. This is second lining, and I am doing the same thing. So this is just the easy way I joined it to the wedding gown. And when I'm done, I know you'll be like, oh, and I want the seam be rough. Yes, it will be rough. But what you do is you just leave it and it will be neat again. So after joining, the only thing that was left was to join my blouse part of the gown to the lower part of the gown. It's not yet a gown, but when you join it, okay, it becomes a gown. You guys understand. So I just secured the blouse part to the skirt part with the office pin. I made sure that the center aligned with the center, the center of the front part aligned with the center of the back part, center of the front part aligned with the center of the front mm, what am i saying let me not bite my tongue i made sure that the center of the front part of the gown aligned with the center of the front part of the fledge see guys you understand look at what i'm doing i don't know what i'm saying again <laughs> maybe you sleep anyways those are my siblings passing by like i said i went back home to complete the gown because the wedding was in a couple of days i think i finished my dress uh three days to the wedding yeah so okay guys after securing the pin, I just joined the blouse to the flared. And this is what we have here. At this point, joining the zip was an uphill tax because the the hard net was pushing the gown, the blouse out, pushing the flared out. But I still found my way around to attach the zip. So this is the zip I bought. I showed you guys in the video of things I bought to make my wedding gown. Check the link in the description box. That video is there. And I just attached the zip to the gown. So I changed my um, my foot presser to the zipper foot presser, and it was very very easy. I think I don't. I spent it as in less time attaching the zip. I thought I was going to spend more time attaching the zip but i ended up not spending a lot of time i was so grateful for this because you guys know that zip <laughs> it can keep you there for three hours you will not believe okay so i attached the zip to the gown i did this for both sides next thing i went ahead to do is to attach the sleeve to the gown if you guys want a detailed tutorial on this sleeve let me know it's a very like it's an off shoulder sleeve but if you need a tutorial on this just let me know so what i did was i secured the the sleeve to the i secured the sleeve to the gown for both sides and i just took it over to my sewing machine and i joined the sleeve to the gown okay so you yeah, just made sure that the sleeve I made sure that the sleeve aligned properly with the shoulder line. I didn't want the sleeve puffing out of the shoulder line. So it took me a while to align it properly, but I aligned it and guys we moved. We moved, okay? We moved. At this point I couldn't hold my excitement because this was like the last stitch I made on the wedding gown. Guys, guys 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 if you watched up to this point and you enjoyed this video or you're enjoying this video make sure you give this video a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe button it means a lot to me it means a lot and a lot to me i want to reach 200,000 subscribers this year and i want you to be part of the family so guys after joining the sleeve to the gown and every every this is what we have here this is the gown mm -hmm.